freeway, that actually takes ownership of that segment of the state highway system off the state highway system and puts it on the local taxpayer through your local toll authorities. This bill allowed them to have ownership of, your, of that segment of state highway in perpetuity. Now, why do you think a toll entity would want ownership in perpetuity if not to toll it in perpetuity? So that's what this bill involved. He testified in the same session against a bill we supported, which was SB 363. This was to take tolls off the road when they were paid for. So we were like, yes, right? We wanted to get that done. Well, here's what he said. When I started studying a lot of this back in 97, I found out that in the 50s, it was absolutely prohibited for one dime of state money to be spent on a toll road. And then he said, this is just my opinion, that he wants to allow toll entities, remember what that means, unelected boards, not our elected officials, but unelected boards, to make the decision of whether or not tolls stay up or come down. In 2001, lawmakers figured out there was no other way they could build toll roads anymore without using the public's money. So that's pretty bad policy. Then in 2011, in November of that same year, we defeated Prop 4. You might remember that. It was one of the few constitutional amendments that got voted down that year. And we worked really hard about that because this involves something called transportation reinvestment zones. This is how they come after property tax to subsidize toll roads. So obviously, uh, there's a huge problem with that. And they're going to raid the anticipated appraisal increases in your property taxes from the time they create a transportation reinvestment zone. All the future increases to your property tax would go to pay for a state highway. So they're raiding your local property tax to pay for state highways that the legislature just seems to refuse to pay for. So they're coming up with all kinds of gimmicks on this stuff. Um, and Senator Nichols supported the, uh, what they call the enabling legislation for that constitutional amendment. So don't count on your property taxes ever going down if they sell bonds that require them to go up for 50 years. <coughs> TRZs were expanded in 2013. Oh, I'm telling you. And this now allows them to raid not only property taxes for toll roads, but your sales tax in the transportation zone. So you're not going to have any money left for your local stuff, and guess what that means? They're probably going to raise that local tax rate in order to make up for all the shortfall that they're spending on state highways instead of expanding your county and city roads. So that was bad. And they just said in um, a hearing like not even two weeks ago that they're planning on seeking a constitutional amendment again to expand this authority to counties because right now the AG's office keeps telling them you're going to be challenged legally because we think it's against the Constitution for you to be able to use this money, for counties to be able to designate these zones and use this money for a state purpose. And so they keep coming at us with these constitutional amendments. So be watching for that. We're going to try and kill it. But if it gets on the ballot, beware, because this is coming after your property tax to build state highways. Then let's go back to 2009. There was another bill, SB 17 at the time. And this was supposed to be designing a process that TxDOT had to follow before they could enter into one of these public-private partnerships. Well, it turned out it was just window dressing because most of these guys don't read the bills. I read the bill, and on the last page of this, like, 25-page bill, it basically said they could skip all the steps that he had outlined in the bill and waive it completely and jump right to a private toll road. They could give TxDOT complete control just like that with the switch. So it was really like, what was the point if they could just waive all the steps? So it was kind of window dressing, I think. Um, and it also had non-compete agreements allowed in there. And we've been trying to kill non-compete agreements for a long, long time. Oops, I guess that was another one, sorry. Ah. Okay, well, I'll just go to 1892. This was uh, a bill, it started out as a very good bill that he and another representative, Cole Course, um, put forward is going to put a moratorium on these public-private partnerships in 2007. It would have chased these foreign companies out of Texas for good. So we obviously were very excited about this bill. Well, the People's Bill passed with a combined 169 to 5 vote. So we had huge support for this moratorium bill, but then the mm. governor vetoed it. Mm. He really mm. likes these public-private partnerships. Mm. Well, here's what